And welcome to our vegan hangout, chef hangout. It's so great. Brian, you've been able to join us from Azerbaijan with your Feed Me Till I Want No More t-shirt on. Oh, not t-shirt. Yeah, come from you, I think. <laughs> and Joe and Martin, all the way round the corner in it. <laughs> <laughs> This is so much fun. To the closest participants. You are the closest participants. I'm looking forward to you coming round with your enchiladas later. Hopefully you can follow my recipe and it works. Now, this is inspired by the Miss Lee Thorne, a cooking course I went on. And it was a whole bed of vegan um, dishes. And I've just picked one. It's so delicious. Uh, so, without further ado, and by the way, I've never done this before, so I'm probably going to get everything right run the wrong way, <laughs> but hopefully not. So, first of all, you should have already, in advance, prepared your pumpkin and sweet corn. Now, what we've got to do with this, we've got to mix it with the black beans. So, I am now going to do that. I'm going to kind of rinse them and mix them. So, I'm going to be off camera for a minute. But don't worry, if you want to do the same with your black beans, I'm putting them in a colander and straining them, and I'm going to kind of rinse them because it's got all of that gooey black stuff. So the beans Are you doing it in a bowl? I'm putting them in a hole, yeah. No, no in a bowl. Uh, it'll, they'll go in a big bowl. I'll have to get a big bowl because at the moment. <laughs> These are still, let me just go onto this camera. There's the black beans, and then there's that. So I've got to put them into a very big bowl. And lo and behold, I haven't got my big bowl in front of me. I thought, hey, I thought, I'm so organized. But I'm going to need to get one. So let me just reach in and get a very large bowl. I'm imp improvising here with a... Uh... A very, very large um, yeah. one of these things. How are they called? Baking tray. Uh, that's a saucepan, isn't it? Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Brian, have you... Oh, of course. It's not It's not afternoon for you over there. It's the end of the day, isn't it? It is. I, I haven't been drinking all day, so it's fine. Uh, you, well, you weren't celebrating Wales' victory, that's for sure, last yeah. night. Never mind. Right, now it says to season this, so I'm going to put uh, a pinch, maybe two pinches, <laughs> of salt, and then I'm going to put a whole load of pepper in there, I'm going to put the pepper in, and um, I'm just going to see what else I need to do with that. I don't think I can use the with that. So now. we're putting in the beans in with the, um, the pumpkin. Yeah. Mix it all up. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Salt and pepper. I'm really liking you clarifying, Brian. <laughs> hey, maybe I should have a glass of wine after this. <laughs> that would well, be good. It's, it's 6 p.m. here, yeah, so. <laughs> okay. Right. Brian, what's the availability like of getting pumpkins in Azerbaijan? Yeah, we've got pumpkins. <laughs> We can get black beans, we've got white beans, unfortunately, but um, I'm sure they'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. Right, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our tomato puree out. Where's my tomato puree? It's not there. Okay. So, Jack, could you get the tomato puree for me? We're going to get the tomato puree, or tins of tomatoes, in the frying pan. Okay. Right now. Frying pan coming up. Yeah, frying pan coming up. Now I'm using passata, but you actually I'm using passata, but you could just use tins of tomatoes. Which one do you reckon I should use? <coughs> oh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, I'll use the, the smaller one, I think, Ryan. Okay. So we're, we're frying the, the uh, tomato up, yeah? Yeah. Yes, we're putting this into the pan, and we're going to mix with that. We're actually going to mix an, um, a vegetable stock cube 
um, with some water. And I've already boiled some water. I happen to have oxo stock cubes, vegetable ones they are. But you could, in fact, use, well, I mean, gosh, when I went on this cooking course, my goodness, they made vegetable stock from scratch. I mean, it was quite incredible. They put all the peelings in, the sheep, you know, like the corn husks. Oh, my God, they put it all in. And um, anyway, so I'm going to put my stock cube in here with, I think it said half a pint, didn't it, of water? Yeah, quarter, quarter of a litre. Yeah, 250 millilitres. So let me just get some water. I'll use boiling water. It'll be a bit easier. <laughs> Gosh. Have a little look. Um, I think there's some cumin involved in this. I can't remember where that comes in. I think it comes in. So that has got to all boil and sort of thicken up. So that's going to be like doing its own thing. Sorry, Ryan. How much water are we putting in? 250 millilitres. Right. Okay. Top light is coming on. Right. So, um, so I'm just going to just refresh my memory now. So what we've done so far, we've cooked the sweet potato and squash, and that's something by we've mixed it with the beans, which is good. Um, okay. So now we have got to put. Um, the cumin in as well into this mix. Right. Elaine, we haven't cooked our sweet potato yet. You haven't? No, it said roast your red butternut squash, but it didn't say cook your sweet potato oh. first. Oh, <laughs> okay. Could you quickly do that then as an aside? I'll it, yeah, I'll give it a fry. Yeah, just quickly do that. I right. thought I gave you an instruction to cook your sweet potato and your pumpkin in advance. It says um, cook your squash and oh, and pumpkin in the oven beforehand. Oh, my bad, my bad. I'm so sorry. My bad. So you'll have to, well, there's two of you. One person yes. could be doing that. Yeah, I love it. Right, a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin. Bring in here. And you put that in with the tomatoes? Yeah, chopped tomatoes, cumin, vegetable stock, all bubbling away. And yeah. if you can, what we did when we were on the course, we did um, um, chipotle chili first, but I couldn't find those. Well, so, I'll tell you what I've got from Azerbaijan. Yeah? These. Or are they? Show yeah. us. Chili. Oh! <laughs> Well, as long as you know the heat, apparently, what you can do to test the heat of those chili is put a little bit of the chili on a knife and put it to your lip. That's a hot sauce. Yeah. And that actually helps you to test how hot they are. So, anyway, what I'm going to do instead for my heat is I am going to use this. I might have that. What, what one have you got, Elaine? Do that. That is actually from the food co-op, so you might have... I've got that jalapeno and lime. Habanero. Habanero and lime. Yeah. Oh, yes, that. Great. <laughs> Great. I used to work with Tim from uh, um, um, the East Coast Chili Company. You, oh, the Chili Company. Uh, so these ones here I've got, these are a real staple in Azerbaijan. These okay. chilies, they're actually not hot at all. Oh, really? <laughs> but these things here are incredibly hot, so mix and match. Okay, well, you know, you know what heat you can handle. Yeah. So, so are we putting the the chilies in through the? Yeah. Yeah. So you can. So in this in this stuff here, this sort of like tomatoey mix. It's the tomatoes. It's the stock, it's the cumin, and it's the heat, whatever heat you're using. Yeah. Keep stirring it around. That's going to kind of like do its own thing for about 15 minutes, or probably as long as it's going to take you to cook your sweet potato, Joe and Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Alright. Oh. We have regular breaks for um, beer consumption. Oh my gosh, I can't even think about that. <laughs> this yeah. is, uh, you know, but do go ahead if you want to break. I've actually got a very interesting thing I want to experiment, which is how to peel garlic. Martin, you might have come across this before, but um, I've never come across it. It involves the bulb, the garlic bulb, and then a tin, a metal tin. So I'm using my cake tin. And this could be something that goes disastrously wrong, but I'm going to give it a go. So first of all, I need to move that out of the way in order to demonstrate it. So you put your clove like that. Let's get a bit closer. Put the lid. No, maybe I don't do it with the lid. I'll find something I can do it with. Uh, oh, I know. The dirt with it. This. Right, so then the first thing is you're supposed to bash it. Right? So this is probably going to wreck my cake tin, but here we go. Can you hear Why don't you just put that on the table? Oh, I can just put it on the table. Hold on to that. Stay safe, put it on this table. Right, ready? That doesn't look like it works. No, that's not working. Anyway, the idea is, well, maybe it is a bit, you bash it and it all breaks open. Then, you put it in a tin, like that. Getting the right thing And then, you shake it up like mad. Yeah. With razor blades in it. No, mine, mine didn't work, just two of them. Anyway, it's two of them. Come back to using that lace. Okay, so, so how's your tomato stuff doing? Is it thickening up? Yeah, it's getting in. Give it a little stir. Right, in a minute now. We are going to do the green, um, oh, my favourite, which is the lime coriander cashew cream. Oh my gosh. This is probably my favourite bit. I said my favourite bit. <laughs> um, there we are. So, give that a stir. Right, is everybody ready for the lime cashew? Yes. Martin, go. Yes, hello. Yeah, good. So, in order to do that, I'm using my blender. I'm going to put all the stuff in here and whisk it up. So, the stuff that we need, let me just read it from my list, and that will help me. Do we blender, do we? Yeah. Have you got one, Ryan? I do. Good. Right, I'm doubling up the ingredients. I want to make lots of this. This will freeze. Not three, because it will keep in the fridge for a week. So I'm, I'm making twice as much. So um, it's up to you if you want to double up. So I'm just going to just wash my bowl out so that I can measure my almond milk. Did you manage to get almond milk, Ryan? Uh, I've got coconut milk. Okay. You can get almonds here in in Baku, but, um We've got like a, a new supermarket opened, which is very good, but um, they didn't have any this time around. So how many how many um, uh, cashew nuts are we putting in the blender? Okay, so we're going to put in a, a 75 if we just want to make one portion. I'm putting in 150. So, I'm up. so that's going in there. Then I'm going to pour in... The um, let's have a look. The almond milk, and that is in actual fact. I'm putting 200 milliliters in. You're only putting 100 in. 
So we're putting almond milk or coconut milk, um, pepper, salt, lime, and how, how many how many of these, um, uh, cashew nuts? Um, well, 75 grams, Ryan. Okay. And then I've got this lovely little thing for a lovely device for squeezing lemons and limes. What have you said, Alan? Hi. Hey. Yeah. Um, the um, the beans and the sweet potato or the um, the pumpkin should that go in the pan with the tomato thing yet? Not yet. Yeah. No. No, no. Just, and the garlic? That doesn't mix together. So that is separate. Sure. And the garlic? Uh, no, the garlic. Actually, I'm not even sure what we're doing with the garlic yet. Hold the garlic. Hold the garlic. I'm not sure. <laughs> I might, I might have just introduced the garlic to just show off to get the skin off the garlic. So <laughs> the garlic and the tomatoes. I don't think so, but it doesn't matter. Why not? You could actually put it here if you wanted to. Right, so I'm squeeze my lime. Look at this. This is my the there from Pampered Chef. Pampered Chef. I absolutely love it. Um, put my lime in there. We'll use it in a minute. Nice with this same. Put with this same. Have I got two in? I've got to say, guys, it's smelling very good from this side. It smells lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I've forgotten to get a lime. I'm going to go and get one. Malamin. I've got one. Come round. <laughs> I've got a bit to add them in. Right. Only be a minute. Come round if I've got spares. Go around, he's got a spare, and I'll wave you on telly, Martin. <laughs> that is so funny. Is there anything else we need to put into the... Is there anything else we need to put into the cashews? Do we need to put the coriander in there? I haven't done that yet, but I will be putting coriander. I think what I should have told you to do is, yep. before squeezing the lime, Get the zest of the lime. Oh, right. It's a bit harder to do it the other way around. Because, you know, I've got, you can do it, but it's much better to get the zest off the lime when the lime is still whole. So I'm going to put the zest in there. And I've got a great microplaner zester, which I've picked up recently, which, if you haven't got one like this, I definitely recommend it. It works so well. Hi, Lyle. So we need to get that line up for Joe when she comes. She's going to be impressed because we've got a little sign that says broadcast in action. Um, <laughs> walk quietly. <laughs> right, so let me just make sure that's all in. And this will be such a fantastic green colour. Coriander. You don't. You have to chop it a bit. But you don't have to chop it so finely. 
But don't Should forget. Should we just stick it in the blender? Yeah, stick it in the blender. Don't forget. Stick in the blender. Don't forget to a few sprigs of coriander for decoration. Oh, yeah. A few sprigs for decoration. Don't forget to keep stirring your tomato mixture as well. Well, that's Miranda. What? Is that, is that how much you need, do you think? Yeah, that looks perfect. Right. So beautiful. I'm just going to rough chop it. I'm going to put the stalks up and put them in as well, not the very end. So odd. And if you're going to be blending, do you want to mute your mic because it's going to be so loud? So when you blend, mute your mic for a bit. I'm not sure how to do that, Elaine, so I'm going to do it in another room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll see if you can mute you. See. Here goes the blending. Let's go. Down a bit. Oh, yeah. So, Joe, don't worry about muting. Steve will do that for If you just put your hands up when you're going to be... Um, Blending, he'll organise it at this end. Right, let me just get my thing plugged in. Now, you might want to mute me, Steve, because this is going to be loud. Oh, I need to get the top of it. There we are. God, I'm not normally so organised in the kitchen. <laughs> if you know, I've had to get everything out. It's a great way of cooking when you have it all ready in advance. It's a big difference. Okay, so the cashew nut cream is coming up. Isn't that beautiful? So beautiful. It smells delicious. You might want to take a little spoon and just taste it. Hello, Martin. Do you want to come and wave to your lovely wife, which will really confuse this, the situation? I'm oh, 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 sorry, not your wife. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, don't, don't. We're just tasting the cashew cream. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. the I better get back to You it. better get back. Rush right. back. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about that. Um, the sweet potato. I know. I know. Joe, Joe, spare the sweet potato. Stir the sweet potato. Actually, that tastes so delicious. So what kind of um, consistency are we looking for? Quite runny. Like that? Let's have a look. Yeah, that looks... Something has a little look at that. Can you put your spoon in it, Ryan? Let's take a look how it drops. Basically, what will happen with this... Is it actually dropping? You might want a little bit more milk in it. Yours is quite thick. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. What kind of consistency are we looking for? Um, quite runny. Quite runny. In fact, okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour mine into here now, so that um, I'm going to pour it in here. But I'll do it on this camera here, so oh, that. Um, the cake is beautiful. Soja, it's beautiful, isn't it? But I didn't use almond milk. I used hemp milk. Did you? And it's just as nice. Excellent. Excellent. Is the purpose in there? Sorry, go ahead. Now you. I was going to say, when we plate up, this is what we'll, we'll use. We'll have the empanada, uh, enchiladas, sorry, and we'll use a spoonful of this on the top. So, you know, put it in a nice bowl, okay. standing by. Um, and then we'll stir. Hi. Is yours looking a bit better, Ryan? Right? Let, let me show you. Let me show you. See so what you think. Oh, that looks a bit better, yeah. How does it taste? Amazing. Isn't it? There you go. That's your truth. <laughs> Alright then. Look, we're going to have a little bit tidy up now. So this is a good opportunity for you to have I a look at make sure. Okay. So do we need to decant the um, 
this amazing mix into a bowl now. Yeah, pop it into a bowl. Potatoes are cooked. Joe and Nice. Yes, it is. They are? Oh, God, I just remember I haven't put the lime in with my um, milk. You didn't? You forgot to put it in? Yes, Martin's coming down the road. Oh, of course he is. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter about that because that's literally for when we place up at the end. So but what about the grating? No, you don't have to worry about that because the neck. Oh, there he is. Guys, quick work. Okay. So, you should have next your corn, um, what's it called? Tortillas. Corn tortillas. So, I'm going to get those out. I've got eight of them. Hopefully, you've got eight. Now, the idea is with these, if we put them in the oven, I don't know, a hot oven for just a few minutes just to soften, not actually cooking, soften. So, I'm going to put the oven on. And, oh yeah, that was the other thing we did with them. We actually brushed them with oil. We brushed them, okay. brushed them with oil. Okay, we them with oil ready. Um, what I'm going to do, a little bit of a waste oil that I use for cooking the um, pumpkins and the potatoes. So there's a little bit of oil left. And so I'm just going to use that. I'm just going to come and use the oil. I'm just going to get it and just brush them with a bit of oil. And what are, we, what are we doing with the pumpkin? Hold on. So we're going to pour the tomato puree, the sauce, into the container that the enchiladas are going to. All right, we're going to pour it in like this. You mean the bowl? Yeah, oh, in okay. the bowl. This is the bowl that you're going to put them in. Right. And you're just going to, not all of it, just a bit of it. Okay. And you're going to take one at a time, you can just drop one in like that, drop it in. A little mixture of the. Elaine, Elaine, can we have that little bit again? Yeah. Just, what, just how, how you're setting things up to go in the oven. Can you just run through yeah. that again, please? So you've got your oven dish, and you've got your um, fry, and you've got your sauce. You drop the sauce, some of the sauce, on the bottom of the dish. Some of the sauce on the bottom of the dish, yeah. okay. Spread it all out. And spread it all out. Yep. Then drop the first gelada in. And just start and then put a little spoonful of the bean and the um, potato mix and just roll it up. Roll it up. And then you're going to do the same thing with the next one. Drop it in. Push it around a bit. Make sure there's plenty of sauce. Another spoonful of. I want to see Elaine. And roll it up. Hey Elaine, how do we get to see the close up on you actually doing that? Because we've got uh, the one of your kitchen. Uh, how can we, how can we... What, you do, what you need to do is pin. So you, can you see the little video and the strip down below? You can yeah. see yeah. one of them. If you click that with your mouse, you pin it so it becomes on the main screen. See what I mean? I'm trying. <laughs> okay, so one of the little um, strips at the bottom, yes. the one where you want to make it bigger, if you click it and select it, it will make it go full screen. Oh, yeah. It's now it's now doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I only tried to do it a hundred times, it's probably my laptop. Oh great, I'm glad. Okay, um, I'm gonna put a little bit more sauce in here. Hang on, just to give me a little bit more to mix with. This is a bit messy, this bit, but anyway. <laughs> so you're going to repeat that eight times. 
Yeah. Didn't see a problem to fill it in. Yeah. Um, but it's it's around. Around. Yeah, next one. I don't know. Just a little box. She's not using a lot. save a little bit of the tomato puree for the end because we'll pour it over the top afterwards. Right. It depends on your, your size pan, but it gets a bit tricky towards the end. So presumably the cream gets served. Let's guess. Okay. Yes. Two more to go. I've never made these before. When she showed us how to make them, I thought it didn't quite good. It's a bit hard of doing it on camera. I'm sure it would be quick if I was doing it on my own, but... You know you sort of like wipe it into it first. Yeah. up a bit. Not too much of it. It'll be everywhere, of course. Exciting. So we just pour the rest of the tomato sauce on top, right? Yeah, and... Um, yeah, you can. And you can actually dust it as well with a bit more oil if you want. I just want to say, just, it's coming together, I think. Coming together? Sure. Let's have a look. Ooh, lovely. Yeah, pour the rest of the tomato sauce over it and actually brush it with a bit of oil as well. Okay. Looking good, Ryan. If you do a close up of my nails, Martin, you can see that Maritza did them yesterday. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, what colour are they? Number 12, they're the black. Oh, I've had mine done for ages. Don't have a close up on my nails, please. <laughs> Right, so I think I might just see if I can put a little bit of oil on any bits that haven't got tomato sauce on them. Four bits, they'll pull through. Just so they don't dry out. And then I think we'd better get these little babies eat them, eat them. in the oven. <laughs> By the way, that's me doing an impersonation of Jamie Oliver. The babies are going in the oven. I've got some spare as well, but I'll just see them. Um, I put them on. Oh, I can't put them in that one. It won't fit. So, so, I'll check how long that takes to cook. But there's things we can be doing in the meantime. So let me just check. So let me just check the actual bulbs. Yeah, what kind of temperature are we putting on the... Um... Oh, check. Right. They go in the Here's my list. Okay. I've got it. Bake for 10 to 15 minutes and, uh, until bubbly and brown. Um, and she says, she doesn't say what kind of oven temperature. So I would say, whew, to get it off enough, 160, 170. Mine's on 200. Mine's on 200. Yeah, I've got 200. You're saying 170? Yeah, well, no, a bit more than that, I think. Just to get it Right. Okay, then. So, clear the decks because we will just prepare some of the toppings now. Please. Oh, just going to tidy my. It's on camera, everything will off camera. <laughs> I can't remember what I did before I was there. There we are. I'm not going to go to waste. Maybe we'll put the tomato mix. Okay. So, when we plate it up, we're going to need.
Serrated blade. Yes. You cut the avocado. Yeah. This blade is curved. Can you see? Yes. So you then put the blade, the curved blade, and follow the shape the inside of the avocado. Oh, I need one of those. I will order one. <laughs> Consider it yours. And the other great thing about it yeah. is it has pointy, pointy bits just here. Yeah. And you can stab yeah. the, stone. The, st oh, the stone and the stone comes out. Oh my gosh. Ryan, are you watching that? I am. I'm amazed. If Lyle was there, he'd have one because he's in the future. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to have to use my fingers. Not ideal. So what do I do with the avocado after I've delicately got it out of its shell? It's sliced. Because, oh. again, this is decoration. So it's a nice slice of avocado. And you should have sent Martin around with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really joking. Um, so there we are. So I've done one side, so I'm just going to go and slice it like that, lengthways. And do the same with a half. And hopefully you've still got a few sprigs of coriander. Elaine, this is using all my favourite ingredients. Really? I love butternut squash and pumpkin. Yeah. I love limes. I love avocado. I love um, almond. So it's, it ticks every box. And tomatoes. Fantastic. What I might do, what I might do possibly, uh, something great. I might, sh no, I wouldn't be able to. I'll tell you about that while the thing is cooking. We made this key guacamole. Guacamole without avocado, but with frozen peas or frozen peas and frosted. It was so delicious. But I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Right, so that's prepared. A few sprigs of coriander for decoration. Um, they're looking good. They're looking good. How are your enchiladas looking? Are they looking, are they starting to bubble? Mine aren't. Onions. Oh, yeah. yeah, lovely. Great. Anything else I need? Um, well, um, and my sauce as well. Just your coriander. So it's yep. onion rings, yep. slices of avocado, and coriander. Taking ours out of the uh, uh, oven. Taking mine out just to show you, so I can then finish the broadcast. So basically, this one is it's cooked and ready to plate it up. So we're just going to put um, some of this beautiful cashew cream on top of it. Put that on top of it. Put some onions on top of that and some slices of 
avocado, and once you have done that, whoops, a sprig of coriander. And it's amazing. There you have it.